CAN bus. Interesting thing, CAN bus. Basically, what you've got on your car is all the components talk to each other. So you, when you turn your stereo here or change your gear here, it needs to send a signal to the car gearbox to, to change gear. And also it displays on your instrument cluster and tells you what gear you're in, especially if you're in sport mode and stuff. So we can listen into the CAN bus and it's a two wire system and we have got a bit of software and a bit of hardware so the hardware we've got is is down on the floor here we work very professionally here don't we tyler right and machina and i'll put the link in the description or i might even put it on the screen a picture of their website there you go we'll get it the right way up there you go machina. and basically what that does is it's got positive and negative and oh, no it's just got the two can wires on it yeah it's just got literally two can wires can high and can low they call them and we've tapped into that and we've used the tow bar connector in the boot and we've run a wire under the carpet and we're listening in so it's like sort of eavesdropping or spying on what the car's talking about and we are going to try and decode the car and we're going to show you how we do it and then if you want to do it or there we go you're up now why are we doing it we are developing we have another company for the hardware we are developing a system whereby we are making a little module that's going to listen into the car so if you want to drive a our primary one is we want to drive a roof bar light now you could drive a roof bar light in the old days you tap into your main beam headlight and when your main beam went on it came on but i'm a bit worried about doing that on these new cars they're monitoring the current consumption and everything and i'm worried that that's going to invalidate the warranty I don't think we've got any warranty left on this one, Tyler. But for you guys out there, it might invalidate. But if you're just listening, it's just like listening to the radio. So we're going to make a module that stands alone, listens to the car. It's, it doesn't talk, it just listens. But we've got to decipher the CAN signal. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we've got the, that's the hardware we use. So it goes from the car CAN into USB into our computer. So if you want to jump around into the car, We'll have a look at the screens and we'll show you how we start the computer up and how we run a program called SavvyCan. Right, you join us in the car. Now we've got on the workshop computer. So we're going to open this. And this is a bit of free software written by Colin. Um, shout out to Colin. And so we are going to open that. Well, what have we got? We've got our Pathfinder screen going on here. And this opens up this screen. And again, this software is free to download. So and we, we just want to set up a connection open the connection window and it should let's add a new device connection it's a serial connection wrong com5 it's a bit geeky this but don't worry about it and this should it says not connected it should toggle over to connected so i'm sorry sorry i'm not doing a proper screen recording just video in the screen there we go it's connected and we've got to check the board rate so if we just connect the click on it click on it there we go that's it Tyler's helping me. And we're checking here this speed. So this is 50,000. This is the board rate or the communication speed. And we've worked out it's 50,000. That one's wrong. That's 100,000. 50,000. So let's just check they're all. 50, 500,000. 500,000. Sorry, you're right. That third one needs to change. Hold on, that one hasn't saved, has it? Yeah, 500,000 save. My bad. Okay. Right, we're all good. Right, so we can leave that we can leave that window now and then what we can do is we can go to this is the main window and we can actually we, we can oh no suspend capturing right let's restart capturing turn the ignition on and whoa right we get all this so this is all happening live and we're capturing this live and basically this is the timestamp here you just turn that fan off um so you can see here this is the timestamp but don't worry too much about it but this is the id so each individual it's like having a classroom full of people oh, have i knocked my microphone off or did you give it to me and i just held it right and this this here is the is the name of all the people in the class and they're all shouting out a message and basically this is the message they're shouting okay now all of these um so now if we start the car there'd be even more and we can turn off and on these messages on this side but what we're looking for let me let me let me go in the overwrite mode. Oh, hold on. Let me. Right. 
No, let's go into the sniffing mode. So this is the mode and we can see what's live, but there's this really tricky mode because because there'll be a signal and the one we're going to decode with you guys now is opening and closing the door. So as we open and close the door, one of these messages somewhere will change, but it's hard to look at all these messages because we look, I've got all these up here. I can scroll all the way down here. Right? But what you can do is you can go into what's called a sniffing mode. So if we just go over here, and then we go into there. You've got a good view of the screen there, Tyler. Yeah. We're going to the sniffing mode. Right. Now, the red and the green is where they're changing. Now, a bit that doesn't change, we, there's a thing here that says fade inactive bytes. So we can, we, can, we can do that. And what you'll see is when it doesn't do anything, it just goes into a sort of, oh, and then it sort of comes in and fades away. And what we have to do is we have to open and close the door. And then we look for one that's sort of fading. There's a couple faded down here. Oh, he's come back, but sometimes they're nothing to do with your door opening. Okay. okay. Now we happen to know what it is because I've written it on the screen. Those of you observant, um, I've written it up here. Oh, 186. <laughs> I've just deleted it. So we're looking for the ID 1A6. So let's have a look here. We can isolate it. So we, we can isolate, but let me just show you what we're looking for. So you can see something's come on and it will fade away. That 3F look has faded away. And when I open the door, it comes back 3D. And then it's changed to 3F, which obviously means closed. So we can actually just look at just that ID there. And in fact, we can let's, let's isolate. So it's just so on this on this bar over on the left hand side, we can go to none. And then just, so that's cleared all of them. And then we can just pick the one we want. 1A6, okay? This is probably a bit boring for a lot of people. Um, and then we've still got the fade inactive bits. I can take that off now. Now, this is currently showing us the value of all eight segments of this message. So every time it speaks, it's broadcasting sort of eight words. There's eight words in a sentence. It talks every time. Now, we don't know if word one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the one we need to look at. Um, so let's just have a quick look. Which, which of the words in that sentence is the one? It's the fifth word here. OK, but notice they start at zero. So it's the sort of fifth word starting at zero. Now, what we can actually do is we can actually view this in bits. So this is hexadecimal. But here we've got this. And so we're really trying to look at. So we've got we've got eight blocks in here eight bits in this. So we've got eight letters in this word in this sentence. So in this analogy, a, a word is a byte and a letter is a bit. And what we'll do is when we open this, we make, ah, oh look, you see, so that second one is opening and closing the driver's door, or is it? Yeah, it's gone green. Here you go, open it. See, and that's the color change is just to show that it's changed. There you go, it's changed. So, and if you open another door, so if you open your door, perhaps, Tyler, I got the camera. There we go. We can see. So the first bit of that sentence is the, the door opening. Right. Now, this is where it gets really cool with this program. So we know. So remember this, Tyler. So it's the fifth byte and it will be the first word is driver's door. So what we can do now, bear with me because I've got to remember how to do this. We've got to open up a tool called let me minimize that minimize the sniffer and then what we need to do is we can file file and we need the dbc file manager so you can record that so you don't have to remember it every time and then we go right we could create a new one or we can load one can't we we can add it to our existing one right well actually let's, let's start a new one oh, i'll give all my secrets away time Create. Could you save the old one? Oh, who knows? Right then, let's hope so. Um, right, so this is the this is a new one. I hope so. I th it was there was one in there, wasn't there? Yeah, but you got to save it. Oh, anyway, <laughs> right, right, right. So we'll, we'll right we'll we'll do this right. So let's edit this file, okay? So this, is a... this is a right. Don't let Simon too near the computer. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a message ID. Now we know the message ID. That's the person in the class that's talking it is 0x1a6. And the message name 
Um, we're going to call this, we're going to call this doors, right? Doors. And then what we've got to do is configure some signals. So you get this window up, and the little tricky bit here is you've got to right click in here and go add a new signal. And we are going to call this one, um, I think we just call this doors, can't we? Yeah. Now we need the, this is where we need to remember which one. It was the fifth bit and it was the, sorry, the fifth byte and the last bit. Does that look right to you, Tyler? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's just, so when this one changed, so this was the, this is the word, so it was the fifth word and it was the, the, the first, because we count backwards, the first letter of the first word. And what we can configure here is the value. So if the value is zero, which we have to write as zero x zero zero, then we're going to display the text um, or right hand, because I'm not sure if you had a left hand drive car, I think it would be the same. So we're going to say right hand front door. Now is that open or closed? If it's zero, close. I'm not sure. We might have this wrong, right? We'll, we'll have a look and then we'll have z if the value is one because it can only it's a binary bit then it's the right hand front door closed right and we'll see if that's right or wrong so that that's all saved now name it. Uh, yeah name it oh, we didn't press save so that is doors you've got to press enter to save that so that's all configured now and what we can do now is we can go back to the to the, the view over here and then if we just just look at well we'll get rid of those and just put the the only person we want to listen to is one a six all right okay what have i got all of those there overwrite overwrite okay and then yeah now we're at, yeah we've got to add the interpret window here you can see that and then we have to press interpret you can already see it started to put door up under here interpret so it's got right hand front door closed. Now, if Tyler opens it, right hand front door open. So now whenever we're looking at all the data, because we, we, we've decoded one bit and it will show us and we can share this file with other people. So there we go, we've got open, closed, and we can do that for each of the doors. Then we can do that for, we can do that for RPM, we can do it for speed. And this will allow us to have the signals we need to activate accessories. So we can say, when the right doors open, turn on the roof bar. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But you can see we can start <laughs> to play tricks. We could say, when the main beam is on and you're doing more than five miles an hour, turn on the roof bar. We've also found out that you can, we, we've decoded the light sensor, how light it is outside the ambient light sensor. So we can now write an algorithm that says when it's dark outside and you're driving more than five miles an hour and you've got your main beam on, put on the light. We can also say when, you're, when your engine is running more than 500 revs, i.e. your engine's running, turn on the roof bar light. Don't turn it on when the engine's not running. So what it allows us to do is to do much more than just tapping in to that old conventional wire. That's what we're trying to do, isn't it, Tyler? Yeah. Um, it's, take, <laughs> it's taken us a while. Yeah, you know, if you were controlled, it's a good question, Tyler. If you wanted to control a roof bar on the roof of your car, what algorithm do you think we should have? What we're working on at the moment is speed greater than five miles an hour. Your main beam has been on for longer than two seconds. Because what we don't want to do is when you flash someone to let them out, we don't want you to take their retina out. That's not very sociable, is it? Because yeah. you were trying to be kind to them and they liked their eyes. So we want to try and make a thing so that when you do that quick flash to let someone out, you don't blind them. So I think we need to have a slight time delay on the main beam. It needs to have been on for longer than two seconds um, to avoid that. And you've got to be traveling at and typically, I guess, when you're flashing people, you're normally stopped at a junction or slowing down anyway. So I think if we get the speed maybe more than 10 miles an hour and the main beam has been on for more than two seconds and the engine is revving, the engine is on, i.e. the revs are greater than 500 RPM, then activate the, the roof light. That's what we're thinking. But let us know, should we amend that algorithm? Is there any other things we should think of there? There is lots we can do. It's very exciting, Doors, isn't it, Tyler? Train response. 
terrain yeah because we we we, we we can know what mode it's in we know what height it is um we've done quite a lot we haven't got access to all the information we've tried to find throttle position but I, there's different can buses in the car and there's a bridge module that that but only some of the engine information makes it over and typically if you if you can see it on your instrument panel we can see it here so you can see the gears the rpm the speed which terrain mode you're in we can see all that on that display there we haven't worked out petrol things or anything like that but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit harder to run out of petrol yeah it's a bit harder to see the petrol go down um, but there we go can bus decoding is good fun um you can totally legitimately look at what's happening in your car and then you can program a circuit board to make things happen based on it good luck with that